Hello and welcome back. In the last session, we looked at the docker run command and also some of the essential flags that we can use with the run command. But what happens after that? How do we manage their life cycle, check the health of the containers or see what they are doing? That's exactly what we are going to cover in today's session. We will look at the essential management commands and also some powerful inspection tools. And then we will put all together in a hands-on lab. Now, before we dive into the details, if you found this content helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow and allows me to keep making more videos just like this one. Let's get started with this. So let's say you have run a few containers. Some have exited, some are running in the background. Let's get organized. The first command you need is docker ps. So here, this is the command. Now, this command will show you all of your currently running containers. But what about containers that have stopped? For that, we will use this docker ps hyphen a command. So here the hyphen a, it stands for all. Now you can see the entire history, the running containers, exited ones, even those that failed. So here in this case, you can see this container is running and this container has exited. You will see their uh, container ID, the image it has used, their uh, status, the name of the containers. This is your starting dashboard. Now let's talk about the core lifecycle commands. The first command we have is the docker stop command. Let's say we have a container, this particular container, which is up and running, right? So this is the name of the container. Now to gracefully shut it down, we use the docker stop command. You can either use the uh, container ID or you can use the name of the container. So the command would be docker stop. And then let's say we will use the name of the container. So what happens here is Docker sends a sig term signal allowing the process inside the container to shut down gracefully. If it doesn't stop within a certain time, it will force kill it with a sig kill. This is a polite way to stop a container. So now if we run the docker ps hyphen a command, you will see that the container has exited. So you can see 12 seconds ago. Next, we have the docker start command. So stopping a container does not destroy it. The file system state is still preserved. To start it back up, we can simply use this docker start command and then the name of the container. Now, a key difference from docker run is that docker start will use the same configuration and command that the container was originally created with. So here I should be able to see that my container is up and running. So you can see this was created 31 hours ago but then this is up and running since 14 seconds ago. Notice how it returns the name of the container and uh, by default, it starts in the detached mode. If you want to attach our terminal to see the output, we can use the hyphen A flag. So here I can say docker start hyphen A and then the name of the container. So the A here stands for attach. Next, we have the docker restart command. This is simply a convenience command that does docker stop followed by a docker start. So here I can say docker restart and then the container ID. So this will first stop the container for me and then start it. Now this is useful for uh, applying configuration changes that requires a container reboot. Next we have the docker rm command. This is a crucial one. Docker rm removes a container. This deletes the container permanently. Its uh, file system changes are gone unless you used volumes which I've co covered in the last session. You cannot remove a running container. So here, for example, if you look at this, so here I have this container running. So you cannot remove a running container. You need to first stop the container. So let's go ahead and stop this. And once the container is stopped, then you can go ahead and uh, remove the container. Let's wait for this container to be stopped and uh, let's check the status once again and you can see it has exited and now I should be able to remove this particular container and gone. The container is deleted and also the file system is also deleted. Now the docker rm command is good if uh, you have a single container but what if you have a bunch of stopped containers and you want to clean them all at once. Removing them one by one is tedious. So you can use a powerful trick docker command, 
which is docker rm command and then followed by one more command so uh, let's break this down so this command that you see in the brackets so docker ps hyphen aq this will list all containers but only show their ids so a stands for all and then q is for quiet so let's try this so docker ps hyphen aq and you can see it shows all the containers quiet which is only show the container id so at this point i have only one container and then basically what happens is first this command will get executed and the output of this command will be passed on to your docker rm command so this syntax will take the list of, uh, of ids and passes it to your docker rm command it's a bulk deletion operation so use it with very uh, caution so here i can say docker rm and then in uh, as a variable we will be calling this particular command so first this command will get execute the output of this will be passed on to this command so let's try this and you can see all my containers will be gone sorry so you can say I, I don't have any containers so to recap the life cycle we have the run then we stop the container you can start the container you can restart the container as well and then you can stop the container and then finally remove the container so this is the life cycle that you have so you create a container you can stop it you can start it you can restart it and then when you want to delete the container you will need to stop it and then delete the container okay so now we know how to manage the containers but how do we know what they are doing is my web server running correctly is my database under heavy load how do we check that let's look at some of the inspection toolkit the first command we have is the docker logs command this is your first and most important tool for debugging. When a container runs in the detached mode, you don't see its output. Docker logs shows you everything that was returned to um, standard output and standard error. So let's say we will create a new container here. So the command would be docker run hyphen dit. Let's do the uh, port mapping. Uh, we will give it a name. So let's call this as my app and then the uh, name of the image and this should start a container for me now to check the logs of this container we can say docker logs and you can either use the container id or the name of your app and here you should be able to see the logs of your container you will see the um, nginx process so this is basically coming from the uh, container um, so you can see the access logs and the error logs as well you can follow the logs in real time as well like using the tail hyphen f uh, with your docker logs we can use the hyphen f flag so i can say uh, docker logs hyphen f and then the name of your container and this will show you the logs in real time so as you start accessing the application uh, you will see the logs as well now this is invaluable for watching what's happening in your application as you make requests to it next we have the docker inspect command now this is a powerhouse command docker inspect returns a giant json object containing every single piece of configuration and state information about the container so let me cancel this and uh, we will run this docker inspect command and this will give you a huge json output it's a lot right so this will uh, contain everything as to what is the status what are the arguments uh, when this was created your image id your network information basically everything so it's a lot of information but we can use filters to get specific information for example uh, what's the ip address of this container for that i can use this command so this will show me the IP address of the container. So inspect and then this is what you will need to pass. Or maybe you want to see what port is mapped to this container. So this will be the command for that. So this is all coming from the JSON blob that I just showed you. So this inspect command is used by many scripts and tools to get low level container details. Next, we have the docker stats command. Now, what if you want a live dashboard of your containers, maybe the resource utilization? Docker stats shows a live stream of CPU, memory, network input output, um, and block input output for all of your running containers. So here I can run this docker stats command, 
and I should be able to see live dashboard of the resource usage of my containers. It's like top for your containers, perfect for monitoring performance and spotting resource hogs. So here you can see what's the CPU utilization, memory utilization, network input output, block input output, the process ID. So at this point, I have only one container, so it shows only um, uh, one uh, container information for me. So this is your live dashboard. Let me cancel this. Next, we have the Docker top command. So speaking of top, the Docker top command shows you the processes running inside a specific container. So let's say I want to see what process is running inside my Nginx container. So let's say we will say Docker top and then the name of the container. And this will show me all the processes that are running inside the container. So you can say I have Nginx processes that are running inside my container. So here you should be able to see the process ID, the uh, user, the command of the main process and any child processes. This is great for confirming that the right process is running and it hasn't crashed. All right. Now let's put all of this into practice with a concrete goal. Our mission is to run a Nginx web server in a container, access it from our, our own computer's web browser, replace the default page with our own custom HTML file, and then view the logs to see our visit, and then finally clean up everything. First, we will run Nginx in the detached mode, map port number on our host, and then we will give it a name. So let's do this. So docker run hyphen D, let's say uh, Nginx app, and then we will do the port mapping. So let's say we will set it to 8080, and then the name of the image. So this will start the container for me. So do running docker ps should tell you that the container is running. Now, open up your browser and uh, try accessing this. Now, we are running this on an EC2 instance. So here, this is my instance. So make sure in your uh, firewall, you're allowing port 80 because that is what, what is mapped to my container. So let me quickly edit this. We will add a new rule. This is HTTP and I will allow this from anywhere and then save. And now we will use the uh, IP address of the uh, EC2 instance to access our application. So let's take the IP address and we will hit this on port 80. Default is 80, so it's fine. And you can see I'm able to see my Nginx application running as a container. So our port mapping worked perfectly. Now let's make this our own. We will create a simple HTML file on our host machine and we'll use a volume to mount it into the container overwriting the this default page so let me go to the root path and here i'll create a new directory so let's say docker lab so here this is what i have so we will go to this docker file and we will have our index.html file so this is the content i have inside the file so you can use the same thing let me save this now we need to replace the running container right we need to replace it with our custom index.html file so let's practice our management commands we will first stop the container and then remove the old container so docker stop let's say nginx app and then we will remove the container now let's run a new container but this time we will use the hyphen v flag to mount our uh, volume where we have our uh, uh, custom index.html file so here i'm using the hyphen v flag uh, i'm giving the path on my machine where i have the index.html file and then the path inside the container where i want the uh, volume mount to happen so let's run this and uh, this should create a new container for us so here my new container is created and now let's refresh our browser and we should be able to see our customized page. The volume mount worked instantly. Now let's see the evidence of our visit in the logs. We will use the docker logs for this. So we will say docker logs, nginx app and here you see this get that basically confirms that uh, uh, I'm accessing my nginx application. 
So you should basically see this logs entry showing this get request from your browser and also you should be able to see the status code of 200. Finally, let's be good citizens and clean up. We will stop the container and then we will remove it. So docker stop, nginx app and then let's remove this. And now if we run this docker ps hyphen a, you can see I'm not able to see my nginx app container. So this confirms that our container is gone. And that brings us to the end of the session. So in this session, you have moved from just running containers to truly managing them. You have learned how to manage them with start, stop, restart and RM. Inspect them with logs, inspect, stats and top. And you have applied all of this in a hands-on lab that mimics a real world task. You are no longer just running commands. You are in control of your containerized environments. And that brings us to the end of this session. In the next session, we will talk about your Docker images. If you found this session helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that like button and share with your circle. If you have any queries, please post them in the comments section. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.